Today I'm going to be making art inspired by the botanical gardens at the Huntington, which is the former estate of the rail tycoon Henry Huntington, and it's in San Marino, California. I'm going to be using colored pencils for this piece, and I have a live audience of one cat named Nero. So I start off with a regular pencil, making a rough outline of the drawing, just sorting out the height and the width. And I complete the whole drawing using a regular pencil. I don't have to be perfect here because I'm going to be redoing it later in colored pencil anyway. This is the rose garden, which has over a thousand different types of roses. Then I go in and I erase the regular pencil bit by bit and replace it with colored pencil. I'm starting off with a warm gray. Now I'm doing the same erase and replace with a different color, this time an apple green on the foliage. Now I'm using a dark umber and this part of the process allows me to refine all the lines that I drew in the regular pencil and kind of redo anything and fix anything I didn't like. This is the Chinese garden called the Garden of Flowering Fragrance. It's the largest Chinese garden in the world outside of China. Now I'm done outlining and I'm going to start shading, starting with this cool gray. And here I'm just sorting out where the light and the shadows are hitting and starting to bring in some three-dimensionality. I'm only shading in the parts where there are shadows. Typical Chinese gardens are surrounded by a wall and feature lots of buildings that you wander around and look out of at carefully composed scenes. Now I'm using a grass green to start shading in the green parts of the drawing. I'm only touching the places where the sun's not hitting, focusing on the shadows right now. The gardens are designed to be seen piece by piece with little surprises everywhere you turn. And here I'm starting to shade with a dark umber, one of the many layers of browns I'll use for this base. I'm just touching the dark parts here, leaving all the light parts empty for now. Here's one of my favorites, the Japanese garden, complete with a rock zen garden and a traditional Japanese home. I'm using a dark brown to just continue to shade in the shadowy parts, but in the dirt area, just the dark parts for now. The Japanese gardens were initially built in 1912, but during World War II, all the caretakers were sent to internment camps, so they fell into a state of disrepair but they've since been refurbished a couple times. Now I'm going to do a second round of shading using lighter colors this time, filling in those places where the sun does hit. This is one of my favorite parts of the Huntington, the bonsai court. They have hundreds of bonsai in their collection, and they rotate them seasonally so that you can see the prettiest ones. My colored pencil set doesn't have a light brown, so I have to create my own by blending a bunch of different colors together, starting with this goldenrod. The bonsai court opened in 1968, but some of the trees in the collection are over a thousand years old. This is the next color in the brown blend, an olive green. Brown's a really complex color. It takes a lot of different types of colors to create it. So bonsai actually originated in China, but it was brought to Japan by Buddhist monks around the 13th century. Now I'm adding terracotta to the brown mix to bring in a little bit of a reddish tone to it. This is another courtyard in the bonsai garden. It has a little stream running through it. Now I'm using terracotta in its rightful place on the planter. And I'm not just focusing on light or dark areas here. I'm just adding more color to the whole piece. They have this section of cute little mini bonsai called Shohin, which is the bonsai that are under 8 inches tall. Now I'm going to shade in the light areas of the green sections with the apple green. This is where the light is hitting. I kind of just shade all over it so I include the parts that do have the shadow so that they're connected a bit and they don't seem like two different sections of the drawing. And here is the bonsai that I'm drawing today. It's a foamina juniper designed by Ben Oki, who is also the curator of the bonsai court at the Huntington. And I liked it because it's not just a miniature tree, it's a whole miniature forest. And I thought that was really cool. It's also got a lot of really cool detail in the bark, which I'm bringing out with a nice and sharp dark umber pencil. 
And this crazy, really white bark with all these little twists and turns. It was a big part of what drew me to this tree in the first place. So this was a really fun part to draw. Moving on from the bonsai gardens, you pass through a bamboo forest on your way out of the Japanese gardens. Now I'm using a dark brown and going in and reinforcing all the darker spots on the planter. When you use colored pencils, it takes a lot of layers if you want to get a vibrant color that also has some complexity to it. Cool looking plant on the way out of the Japanese gardens. Now I'm doing another darker layer in the dirt because I got to make sure it looks like it's filled with lots of nutrients. This is the way to the Australian gardens. Now I'm adding an olive green to the whole dirt area because there was actually quite a bit of moss at the base of the plant and I want to bring that out. This is in the Australian garden which is filled with humongous plants. Now I'm using more olive green but this time in the foliage. I actually ended up using four different types of green here and this time I'm just accentuating the shadows more now that I have done dark and light. I'm just going in for more detail. Now I'm doing more shading on the tree trunks using a cool gray. And I jump from section to section instead of doing all the tree trunk work at once or all of the dirt work at once because I want the whole piece to feel more connected. Here's the entry to the lily ponds which are at the end of a huge open field. Now I'm bringing in a darker pumpkin orange to the brown blend that I'm doing in the dirt and this is to warm up the tone a little bit and also I'm trying to cover up the last of those white spots where the paper's still peeking through. Here's the lily pond. I didn't stay here too long because I wanted to get to the desert gardens and this was just on the way. Now I'm doing another round of all over apple green just to soften up those harsh shadows that I made with the olive green. Here's the Desert Garden, which has one of the world's largest and oldest collections of cacti and succulents. Now I'm using a dark brown to get a little bit more serious on the shading with the tree trunks. There's a really cool big succulent. Now I'm using a dark umber to shade the brown and the dirt. And I usually wait until later in the drawing to use the really darker colors and get serious with the shading because it's easier to correct yourself with lighter colors at the beginning. Some parts of this garden definitely feel like they belong in a Dr. Seuss book. Now I'm using Peacock Green to do another layer of shading in the foliage part, focusing on the shadows again. And that means it's time to feed the cat. One of my favorite parts was all the white fuzzy types of cacti they had. And now one of the final steps, I use black to outline everything and do some final shading. I like outlining when I use colored pencils because it adds some much needed definition, which is important because I usually choose to use colored pencils when I want to show lots of detail and use color at the same time. And black's also nice to shade with because it's a neutral color. It doesn't add anything except darkness. There's a couple more types of fuzzy white cacti. Now I'm using black to outline the green parts of the drawing. And I'm making the edges really jagged because there are lots of little pine needles that make them up. These are golden barrel cacti, many of which are over 100 years old and weigh hundreds of pounds. Then I do one last layer of apple green to blend in the shading I did with the black and add a little bit more vibrancy. And then I had to leave because the grounds were being evacuated due to a potential gas leak. And here's the little time lapse I made of the whole drawing from beginning to end. And there's the final finished drawing. Thank you so much for watching this and please come back in two weeks for a new video. Bye.